A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's pleasure welcoming you all to second edition of Orange City Literature Festival organized by SGR Knowledge Foundation. I am Muskan Bhatte, anchor for this session, and the topic for this session is Does Media Trial play an important role in general public opinion? The speaker for this session is Mr. Prabhu Chawla. Having begun as a reporter and spent over 40 years in journalism, during which time Mr. Prabhu Chawla has headed the India Today group and the Indian Express as an editor. He has witnessed and recorded dramatic changes in Indian democracy, from the trauma of the emergency, the pathos of Rajiv Gandhi's rise and fall, and the angst of Mandal to the turning of liberalization and rise of coalition politics. We welcome you, sir. An entrepreneur correspondent, Niharika Chugwali Ma'am, is the moderator for this session. Starting her journey as a student of MA in international communications, she is today the founder of Jump Kids Indoor Play, a conceptualized indoor playground for kids with soft play areas and hands-on workshops. She is also the co-founder of Flourish, a local lifestyle brand focused on premium plant decor and styling. Blending her ideas and creativity to innovation is a thought and is here today to add more meaning and value to the post in City Literature Festival. Now, I would like to hand over the session to you, ma'am. Thank you so much for that introduction, uh, Ms. Khan. And a very good evening to all those uh, joining this vir virtual session uh, today. I, for one, am delighted and honored to be here to try and gain insight into what most would agree is a very, very a relevant subject, a relevant question in today's times, does a media trial impact public opinion? Now, the mention of the term TV news evokes all kinds of responses today. Some are indifferent, some are critical, but one cannot ignore the fact that a large section of uh, commercially successful television networks specifically today are known less for good journalistic practices in the conventional uh, sense of the term, with journalism being considered the fourth estate, and are unfortunately associated more uh, with uh, sensationalism, drowning the news in noise, glossing over facts, uh, pushing political agendas, being called paid media, so on and so forth. Why has a mainstream television journalism in particular taken this turn and what does it mean for the way public opinion is shaped? To know the what, where, and why of this uh, through some Sidi Bath, we have with us, other than uh, one of India's uh, most experienced working uh, journalists, Mr. Prabhu Chavla, very warm welcome, and thank you so much uh, for making time to join us here. My pleasure. Uh, so so I want to begin. Yeah, yeah, please. So I want to begin uh, by getting straight to the point, since I've been tasked with asking questions of a journalist. Yeah, of your definitely. Get straight to the point um, and ask you that as someone who has witnessed firsthand uh, the evolution of the Indian media industry over four decades now, and uh, as someone who has held powerful decision-making editorial positions uh, in the industry, what is your stand on all of these allegations that face the Indian media today, and how do you believe that it is changing the way public opinion is shaped? I think public has to be informed properly because public, like the media, you had already considered the media trial. I think the media is already emerging in trial, and then you are defining TV journalism also. So I think it is the fault of media personalities and current leadership that they are not able to disagree with the public on this impression that the media trial has started. So say, what is media? Because media is a different kind of formation now. Media, you have got the print media, you have got the electronic media, you have got digital media, you have got all sorts of social media. I don't know which media you are referring to, but trial mostly happens on Twitter and Facebook. It doesn't happen on, on both of the TV channels because there are 800 TV channels in the country, out of which 250 people are new channels. And out of 254 new channels, there are about seven, eight prominent English news channels and some of the regional news. If you look at the viewership, all the news channels together, if you go about 300 million TV, TV connections all over the country, and news channels are basically watched by less than 1% of the viewership. If 1% of 300 people watching new channels, if you think that is media trial, that's your perception of mine. 
because one person can't decide what is good and what is bad. But in general, at least people sitting in cities like Nagpur or Delhi or whatever, they only watch English news channels or some prominent news channels. They form their opinion that they become news anchors who are prominent, as you rightly pointed out. They make noise, not make new news. But that is exception to the media. They are not the journalists, they are exceptions because that is not generally all of us. But yes, commercially they may be successful. I have been in the media for the past four years. I started as a media journalist, journalist. I have still been proud of media journalist, though I am much better known as a TV journalist. And I was in India today for about 25 years. Everybody has seen my violence, but nobody has seen my picture. Ever since I started to the path, I became some kind of a famous channel. But I think I wrote better stories differently even now, I write better columns than I do because they are here to listen to the opinion. So what you rightly pointed out, that media, what you are referring to media, what I call the peripheral media, which is not the mainstream media, they are doing the media trial because that is the model they have adopted. Various brands have come because media is being also hawked, I use the word hawked as a product, not as a tool for giving you information. So when you're selling a product, you have to wrap it in a particular kind of a branding and packaging. So those are branding. So the channels are selling themselves as a brand, as a product, because you can get different varieties of soaps. There are certain soaps which are better packaged. They look very attractive, they are not very attractive, but their market share is very limited. So out of 1%, some people who are who are good at speaking loudly, they're not listening to the reason. They're the people that decide, okay, I'll decide the conclusion first, and then decide the content. I will decide the headline first, then find the body of the story to fit into that headline. So now the basically what is happening, what media you're referring to, if you look at the headline of the YouTube channel, where they are prime time and moon, name any one of them, but the anchors are now becoming bigger than what they are. And they survive because they are anchors. They are, they are staring at you from the screen. They are on full close up pictures of their appearing. And they come with more opinion because they think either we shout because we have done the analysis. Well, the anchors are now taking about 30 to 40 percent of the time of one hour, where all the 20 other guests get about 60 percent. And there is one channel you see 20 windows on the screen, but you find the anchor only shouting at each other. So that, that anchor speaks for about out of the one hour, he speaks for 48 minutes, others speak for 20, 10 minutes, but they are happy to be seen on the, on the screen. So what you are referring to, media trial because of certain individuals who are doing the trial. They choose the headline first, they decide to find the headline, what they do, that the subheads of the title that they put there, and they invite the guest who, who also speak the language they want to speak, because they select the guest, okay, you speak for it, Again, for it. If you want to speak for it, you are welcome. If you are against my motion, you are not welcome. So, I must tell you, in the media by and large, is still independent, particularly the print media, particularly the regional media, if you can tell not for local newspapers, you won't find this kind of what you see on the TV. TV is more new channels, some of them are more entertaining than the, than the newspaper in the morning. Which you so, I would say, 40 years, yes, journalism has changed. Journalism has been also become one of the industries like any other industry. Bottom line, they have become more important, means the profit has become more important. And because of that profit, we stay away from basic principles all the time, which leads people to believe we are given names of paid media, fake media. All these titles are given to us. We accept it, we talk about it, because there is nothing happening. So there are more choices for the consumer now. We are being remote controlled. You have got a remote control in your hand. If you don't like my face, you don't like my statement, you can shift and move to the other channel. So I can't survive with that model for a long time. I'll survive for a couple of months, a couple of years. After that, people don't want to say, when you look at me, they'll say, okay, he's surrounded by 10 panelists. They will speak the same language they want to speak. And after that, you see, month after month, same thing. You drop the person. That is psychology of human beings. Only the committed people stay there who are committed to that kind of ideology. Or Reality, they will stay there, other you won't stay. So I would say this is, I think, injustice to all of us in the media and the oldest editor in the country. 
So I would say it's a very sad day for us when we see that we are, we are trying to be a part of the media trial system, we are part of the fake news system, we are part of that. that that's a very sad thing on our what is happening. But for some people, I think entire media cannot be blamed. Indian media is still independent. India media still gives you the objective. Okay? So I would suggest to you go back to reading. So you will stop reading. Kids have stopped reading. Tell you to kids and everybody else who read in the college rather than listen to them. Because if you read proper newspaper, if you want to consume media, if you want to consume news, you better go back to newspaper. Television, you can see some of the values are good. Don't, don't, for God's sake, brand entire media as a media which is something. Absolutely, sir. And it can be uh, debated that the medium of television also, considering it's a visual medium, can in some ways be limited when it comes to storytelling and going into detailed nuance and facts uh, in the sense that it also has to be entertaining and engaging. Uh, now coming to the crux of uh, our topic today, which is media trials, wherein we have to specifically talk about TV news, who are basically the ones accused of this. Now, the term uh, media trial is casually thrown about, and it basically implies that uh, the media industry is somewhere overstepping its uh, journalistic boundaries of ethics to enter a territory which is uh, ideally the jurisdic jurisdiction of uh, the law or the judicial system. Uh, especially in relation to high profile cases where uh, powerful public personalities are involved, making these also um, stories that interest people much more and are considered to have a higher TRP value at the end of the day. Now, in this race for TRPs, one is witnessing many things. Uh, the normalization of, you know, premature pronouncements of guilt uh, on individuals who are already facing legal trial, uh, parallel investigations which many would say then affect the outcome of uh, investigation by official agencies. Uh, where then do you believe as a journalist, should the media uh, draw the line between reportage of facts and maybe even investigative journalism and playing judge, jury and executioner? Well, you made the last sector such a judge, jury and executioner. That is not our role. And our job is only that of an investigator. I would call journalists is supposed to collect information. The basic principles of journalism, which I have been taught and I have been teaching, that you have to follow certain W's. One W is what, second is why, third is where, and what next. These are the four important W's of Indian journalism. You have to do if you forget any one of these. You are not being complete, honest journalist. So, what is happening now? What is more important? Why nobody knows there's any particular journalist traffic? And where, of course, the fact that they don't even mention them that that's for what they have They assume that all of them know. And then what next is the, what you are referring to, where is the possibility of What next is, hang somebody, arrest somebody, the guilty, that is what next they are predicting before the courts have predicted that. That role which has taken with part of the 4W, but they have forgotten the first three W and gone with them. What next that okay, I decide this ko arrest karlo, this ko ban kar do, this ko chhod do, corrupt hai, ye wo hai. But again I come back to the, our job is not that. Our job is to investigate, present the fact that they are. What I see, I report. What I listen, I write. If I listen myself, not unhone bataya mere ko, my sources are told, yes, my sources can be credible also. If I trust my sources, I can say my sources are told. But my sources, if I see from life of the document and whatever is happening, then I take the responsibility for what I am telling my readers and what I am showing my viewers. What is happening now, journalists have absolved themselves for any response. There is no action taken against them for giving wrong information, whatever. So, what they think, people shouting by saying that I am also, I have decided you have committed a crime, I have decided what crime you have committed, and I decided, okay, you should go to jail. So, the judge has rightly pointed out. But again, I will come back to that. This kind of decision, there is a rat race happening. People are coughing, everybody wants to become a personal kind of angry, wants to do it. Because that's the first way of thinking at the time. Well, most of the journalists are not, not known for what story they have written. They are known for how loudly they can shout. So that's the difference. 
journalist should be known by the story he writes or she writes, not by the decibel of level of her, her, her voice. So this is a competitive journalism where the TRP is coming. As you rightly point out, TRP is the one sin which the country has committed. The TRP will decide whether you are doing or not. People want to see dangal. They want to see dangal. Yeah, but the question is, if they are fighting with each other, people want to enjoy it. Sadak pe jab dollar dollar jade, lad rahe hote hain, to wahan sari bhir gatti ho jati hai. Dekhte rehte hain cycle se utar ke, gadi se utar ke, dekh kya ho raha hai. That is TRP. So this TRP is referring to it. The people are parking, stopping at the TV channel for a couple of seconds or minutes. So they can mada aara ladai ho rahi hai, ladai ho rahi hai. So this is a road shy of show which is happening. Where everybody is stopping for a few seconds, watching what is happening, and then moving on. But the RP did not say. And because commercial undertaking, all the TV advertising companies, advertising managers, they have to also justify why they are advertising the particular channel. They go, "Ek bandar ka aaj ho raha hai, isko dikha diya TV aadhi ko, kya the? Maine toh the number hai. Isko dikhana hai, sabse aadhi ke. Whether people are watching them, they are buying the product or not." That nobody is the analysis of the people who are watching that. That is one area. Whether the, your what the TV channel influence their purchasing decisions or not, they are not linking. TRP give only the number. They don't give the nature of decision making of the people who are watching. That's a big problem. There, there is a flaw in the TRP system because it is a quantitative analysis, not a qualitative analysis. In terms of whether the people who are watching after watching the TV where people are fighting by. They have gone and decided to buy a particular car with the advertise there. Have they gone to buy a particular TV? They have gone there or not? I don't think new channels are able to decide the purchasing nature or consumption pattern of any household because they one percent. So TRP because of TRP, this whole thing has started, and the whole scam now between CBI investigating, ED investigating. It is only TRP because he paid so and so to to, to close the channel. Or, Pay money to stop the channel or somebody else manipulating the TRP, and because of that, people advertise, and there was fraud was committed. This is true. So this is not TRP. Is a is a I would call a biggest criminal for destroying the credibility of good journalism. So TRP has to mechanism. Some other mechanism has to be involved. But TRP is not the correct mechanism about the credibility of any particular news outlet or publication. TRP is just a number which can be manipulated by sitting at home by anybody who is with Canada. But for 4,000 households, can't decide who watches what. Your boxes are fixed at 4,000 to 5,000 houses in the country of 130 crore. But that is what the market people, the leaders have decided. It's a conspiracy of those top-level corporate people who are also members of the TRP system, who are also members of the bar. They decide among themselves what is to be done. So it has to be dismantled. Where the and the people who are running the TV channel, who are running the newspaper, they are members of the system. Obviously, that system cannot be. There is a conflict of interest. So India needs a system where you can do the both qualitative and quantitative analysis, in which conflict of interest is not there. Newspapers and TV proprietors are not part of it. That has to be. It has to be dismantled. This current system. Independent people should come there, and they should be doing the analysis. So that the people who are watching anything, they must know what they're getting. So you made a very important point about audience, because in this whole debate, we end up, uh, you know, severely critiquing the media houses and the journalists and the news anchors. But the fact is, people are watching. Do you think somewhere the onus also lies with the audience uh, that they have some level of agency on how much they are willing to accept the kind of content uh, we are being fed? Uh, you know the understanding that uh, we can question it and demand better. Do you think we would receive better if we did that? Well, there is a saying: now people get the government they deserve. You are the getting the TV channels they deserve. So what are you saying? That I use the word in the we are remote control. Then I did an interview with Rakhi Sawan, and she was just in the news for ten years ago. I criticized the all the young. Anchor now working great. Sir, why did you go and interview so and so? I said, consumers want it. My editor, who he took an article editor, he thinks that 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 will be better here. That's why you have to marry. So I went and interviewed. When she got married on TV, then I wrote to husband wife who was against that. 
point you again then. Can you imagine that was the record we are giving till today has not been broken by human entertainment. So if the people have interest in this kind of crap, I want to talk about crap. And they want to hog on to the TV channel and they see Raki Savan speaking in a particular manner, having provocative messages which you want to get people and see it. So what question you ask is that the audience is also responsible. Because if you don't do it, if you are criticizing me now for being in the some kind of a journalism which is not required, but why do you watch it? But you are watching it because I say you are watching not because you are getting information. I told you in the beginning, it's the Bandar Ka Naach in the middle of the road. You are interested in watching it. But still you say that Bandar Ka Naach Hora Sadke Beach Man Dekhna Hai, Uske Andar Dho Pudho Dog Fighting is going on, you want to watch it, watch it. But audience is also responsible because I think they look at the TV channel more. Some of them politically motivated because they, they like the person taking their political line. So they enjoy because they're politically aligned with them. But most of the people are watching these kind of shows which you are referring to because of entertainment they enjoy. So they enjoy it, but if that is their taste, advocated for that taste. So I am also being compelled by the audience response, but I will again say the RP is not the only way of managing. The credibility, I use the word credibility. There's a difference between a popular media and a credible media. So popularity can be to any means. You can do a good dance and you can get a better popularity, but you can do a good acting, you can also get a better dance performance will get much more viewership than the good actor like I'm talking just speaking somewhere. So you want some kind of a good dance performance and you want a good acting, dance, artful dance is good dance. There are other kinds of dances as well. So, so I'm referring to the question is the audience is interested in how you the entertainment. They're not taking it seriously. So if you are talking about numbers, if there are no numbers to that, then you would see perhaps that these people will not get advertising Numbers are the advertising agencies, they also want to sell it justified to their client. Okay, I give them nothing with viewership. Having the action leadership, they also Malik doesn't bother the cow like a hell of The audience is equally responsible for, for the kind of journalism we are serving. Correct. So, so what is the way forward practically in order to maintain a healthy equation between the commercial interests uh, of the media industry? Uh, coupled with its duty towards society to be, uh, you know, the cornerstone of democracy and uh, also serve as a source of information. And in, that brings us to the debate around uh, press freedom and uh, its regulation. How can we ensure that our media is free, independent and yet accountable and responsible? The question is, you have put so many questions in one question. I can, I'll handle one by one. We are all dependent on as I speak in the beginning, that we are dependent on as a print journalist and dependent on the circulation and leadership of the If they don't like my product, they must stop buying. That is the one thing because they you, know, you can't force the people to buy this product or device. You have to give that in a democracy, consumer choices are paramount. You can't fiddle with it. So as you are saying, what is the way out? Way out lies with the, in the hands of the people. There is no monopoly. You could have blamed us because we are serving a monopoly. There is no monopoly. There are varieties of There are maximum channels that are available. So it is basically lies in the hands because some of the channels are being run by nuclear sources. We don't want to talk about that. Where the money is coming from, most of the new channels are not making money. They are losing money because they are still on air. Somebody financing them for a particular purpose or a motivation, that only they know. But I am talking about good channels. Good so way out can be only if people decide. Remote control, you have got in your hand. They decide, okay, I won't watch it. DRP is one thing which is happening, but now the DRP will be higher better. So if people stop watching channels, stop eating, our punishment is in the hands of our customers, and consumers. The way out cannot be imposed by anyone. I can't tell anybody, don't watch this channel, don't watch that channel, watch this. I can market myself, okay, my channel is the best, my channel is fast. You, now you are saying that everybody carries a band, big band, exclusive. Same person speaking to four different channels within the span of five minutes, 
and everybody is saying my means to me. Only scrutiny with two three sentences are actually the rest are other things. So this SQC banner appears, okay, SQC, SQC, somebody says word, SQC, somebody says national SQC, somebody says this exclusivity has become which is much more uh, exception than than that you can say is regular because nothing exclusively left. So choice of the people will decide I cannot interfere, I can only sell myself. It is for others to buy. If they buy the bad product, I'll blame the consumer. And because other thing is, as you actually pointed, we can be fine because everything is being sold free. Newspapers are being sold at about 25 percent of what they cost us. The consumer is not willing to pay for the newspaper or for the TV channel. They want everything to be that much profit. Government of India should ban free for their broadcasting. Everybody should pay. If you start paying, perhaps you will drop some channels because you don't want to pay for it. Now the packages are come. That would be the channel as we will be giving a package. But still, the government of India has made a rule that you have to serve free news channel. channel. You must have seen the revolution. Government should withdraw that directive. No free channel. Every channel has to be subscribed. They have to pay for it. First thing is, newspapers also must come to the, some kind of a conclusion that reader must pay for it. I can't sell a newspaper for half the price at least half the price. And when I'm getting there, it cost me my papers 20 rupees to print, and I'm asking you to pay it, I have to borrow some 12 rupees, steal 12 rupees, or tax from somebody, then the compromise starts. I go to the advertiser, he compromises, and I give him the news. Which is not correct. So basically, subsidizing of the media should stop. So I know you are very, very short on time, but I do want you to throw a little bit of light on, uh, you know, how the media landscape is changing. We now have the mushrooming of these small digital news portals, which don't have big funding, uh, which have a very, very niche audience, and yet they are seen as more uh, credible, for lack of a better term. Do you think? Um, the emergence of these will be truly disruptive or is this just part of a cycle of evolution and will this in the long run have an effect on the way public opinion is shaped? But you must have seen the government of India issued a resolution now where you have to register yourself yes. they are unrestricted, they are not registered, anybody can go, you can question it. But there are always allegations that there is so much obstruction on, on, on freedom and which is decided uh, some kind of coercive action being taken at the night, or cases are being filed against journalists, all that is happening. But these are not new things that happened in the past as well. But what we are saying that new digital media, because there must be about one, one million total. I would say they are also, some of them may be good, but most of them also motivated. But they have, they are also battling their own personal views at the same time. And you can't check them because they can write anything they can write. So they are actually problems also. Social unrest that happened in most of the education, the digital media was more important. I would say yes, it's a good time to have more and more people. But it has to be regulated by somebody. It has to be controlled by somebody. Foreign agencies, for example, they were not Twitter was becoming a problem. In American election, you must have seen Twitter has to come qualify what you to say. Even in India, they don't have like the case. So digital media is yes, is a good development. Okay, because it doesn't cost much. I can open a portal by thousand rupees, register a name, domain, and start filing it. And ask young girls and boys to buy story wherever they speak. So I've seen many people you know filing story there. We have to in a democracy like 130 million people. It has to be we have to be very careful because one bad news on WhatsApp or, or, or Twitter and create a riot in that. So how do you control that? Basically, I am saying nothing should be freely available to you. Once you are paying, you will consume only it is credible. You do. Because access to information should not be free. Information is power and power cannot be delivered at your no step on your screen. Free of cost. If I am delivering you free of cost, I am not giving you correct information. It's a value. Because it costs me to connect with information. So if I am giving you free, it means somebody else is paying for what I am showing you. 
what I am writing for it. How to prevent that is the major challenge for Indian media. So the Indian media survived on the subsidy by the powerful industry and governments. It has not paid for itself. It has not been, as you call, in a fashionable world. It has not been like past Nirbhar media. We need a past Nirbhar media. Otherwise, there is going to be a riot out there because there will be much more. It's my news versus your news which will be competing rather than my news which is correct against the person who has committed a blunder and a mistake. I will be defending the mistake, somebody else will be supporting the mistake. So if you are paying for it, you will believe only what you think sounds credible. If you are saying they are credible, they will be credible only if you are paying for that. You will not, there is nothing free in this country. There is no free lunch, I can say. If you are getting a free lunch, it is diluted, adulterated, it will ultimately affect your mental health. Absolutely, sir. And an Atmanirbhar Bharat definitely needs an Atmanirbhar Atma Bharat. If, if that means that uh, we prepare ourselves to pay for the quality we want, then so be it. So uh, I know you're short on time, but I cannot uh, let you go away without asking you. You are all set to make a comeback to the television screens. You just announced that two days back. Uh, how are you approaching this new stint and what can we look forward to from you? No, no, I've not announced it. I know they have announced that I'm my role is very limited. I started at the Bath, which is my role. That's my limited role. I'll continue to work for the Indian Express. Yes, I want to get at the age of 74. You expect me the same for the Kalai Kalai in the 50s. So it will be difficult. Yes, I would like to do because that is what, what I would like to show the young journalists who okay, you can ask many questions, but there are ways of doing it. But people's expectations are very scary for me at least. I don't know how I'm going to tackle with the time. I'm happy to go back and do the thing. I thank yet the young for having me. Faith in me. My role is very limited, only doing the show. Well, we are looking forward to seeing you back on our TV screens and we wish you all the very best for this new beginning. Thank you so much for joining us and making this such an insightful and enlightening conversation. It was an absolute pleasure talking to you, sir. Thank you for having me there. Thank you very much. Back to you, Muskan. Why is Unka Niyara? City Literature Festival, I would like to thank our speaker, Mr. Prabhu Chamla, and our moderator, Ms. Niharika Walichu, for joining us and making our event even more grand by your presence. Thank you so much. We all are inspired by your words. Our okay, next session you. is Desire and Sexuality on an Unseen Side of Society, Educating the Educated. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. 20 years of existence, two universities, 23 educational institutes, offering 137 courses, Rice Group of Institutions, a vision beyond.